Hello, everybody. My name is KevGuy378, and welcome back to the Prussian Quest.、Uh, we left off last time with with talking to my older brother about how I felt lately, and now it's a dry Sunday morning, and I'm not very depressed anymore. I'm just depressed now, so that's good. It's a dry Sunday morning. You grab your morning coffee and scoot your rapidly growing kitten off your office chair. And despite her protests, sit down at your desk to check your email. A new message pops up in your inbox almost as soon as you do. It's from Amanda, and you remember your meeting in the cafe and awkwardly bring up your feelings to her. Hey, buddy. Hey, sorry it's been a few weeks. I meant to get this to you sooner, but it took a while for me to get a hold of my folks back home. Dad told me to say hi. By the way, anyway, I remembered what we talked about last time. I saw you, and I hope you aren't insulted. But I asked my mom for the number for her therapist. Don't worry, I didn't tell her who it was for. I think she's worried about me now, though. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, the number is six four seven seven two three five two seven four. It's a really good office. You should look into it. Talking to someone never hurts. If you're worried about money, don't be. They're one of the View that has a really good sliding scale fee system and won't charge you what you can't afford. I hope you're feeling better. It was really nice to see you again. A. Um, I can't say this enough, but if you have depression or have any any mental instability to to really express yourself or just. Have anxiety and just hard, you know, hard to really concentrate on things because you're just overwhelmed with with thoughts of, of of sadness and just problems. I really want you to please find、uh, someone to talk to,、uh, get a therapist because they really do help a lot. When you're talking to someone, they can they can understand you. And if you have the opportunity to try different therapists,、uh, please do. Sometimes the、uh, therapist, you can sense if if you feel comfortable with the therapist or not.、Uh, you don't. Sometimes it, you don't have the opportunity. But if you do, just find someone you really like to to be there for you that you feel comfortable with. It's still early enough that you could call and make an appointment today. Your kitten curls up in your lap as you consider what to do. Call the therapist number. You're looking forward to the help you think they can offer. Try your luck and call the number, even though the mere thought of talking to someone makes you anxious. She cared enough to send it to you, after all. Sleep on it and see how you're feeling in the morning. You're not keen on the idea at all, but you don't want to disappoint Amanda. Close the, me- close the email without thinking more of it. This has been embarrassing enough already. I am still just depressed. That is, that's good. I didn't get worse. I will try my luck and call the number. You read through Amanda's email two or three times, then sit and stare at your computer for a while, while the memory of that uncomfortable conversation makes you feel newly embarrassed and self-conscious. Part of you is also encouraged by the fact that she cared enough to get back to you at all. Sitting in front of your computer, you start to question things like whether or not Amanda sent you this number out of pity, or perhaps some sense of obligation after having listened to you. You question her motives and the validity of her concern, and whether or not you think seeing a therapist would even be helpful. Yet, almost unconsciously, you reach for your phone, and before you realize what's happening. You're listening to the therapist's line ring. Before you can bring yourself to hang up, you're listening to the slightly clinical but not unpleasant voice of the receptionist. Ask how she can help you. Uh, I. I'd like to make an appointment with the. The doctor. You manage to stammer out. The conversation is quick and not nearly as unpleasant as you were fearing, and quicker than you can say Freudian slip. You've scheduled an appointment. Quicker than you realize, appointment day rolls around. What do you do? Go to the therapist's office. Can't head to the therapist's office, even though you're totally unsure of what to expect. 
sit in your car, terrified, and try and talk yourself into flesh out of going. Just the thought of going to your appointment ties your stomach in knots. You crawl back into bed. It is very scary the first time uh, going because you are totally unsure what to really expect. I mean, I mean, you see a lot of movies where you know people just lie down in couches and you know just talk about their feelings and everything, but it's not really simple like that. There's、um, a lot of therapists have different approaches to how to help you. Science of life. You have your first session with your new therapist, Dr. Susan Melville, a tall woman in her mid forties with a disarming demeanor and patient eyes with the start of the slightest smile lines. She makes you feel comfortable fairly easily, which is a pleasant surprise after all of your anxiety over the appointment. As you leave, you make a second appointment. You're still skeptical about all of this, but figure you might as well see where this goes. The hardest part, it seems, was taking the first step. You're not. You're still not sure if and how you're going to tell your family or your partner, but you figure you'll deal with that when the time comes. Either way, you feel relieved that you managed to see this through instead of being paralyzed with worry over it. Even if nothing comes of it, you did something you said you would instead of flaking out or running away. You're emotionally exhausted when you get home and collapse into bed. You sleep better that night than you have in a week, and you're not sure if. It is because you were so tired when you got home, or if it's because of the therapist. You are moderately depressed. You find it hard to focus on anything because you get physically and mentally exhausted very quickly. You are in, a, in therapy with a good counselor. You're doing cognitive, cognitive behavioral therapy techniques, and they are starting to help. Usually, that's what、um, a lot of therapists go for. Uh, depending on the therapist that you go to, usually it is、uh, CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy. And I, I'm getting less depressed. That's really good. And have a counselor now, but not taking medications. It is early on a Wednesday morning. Lately, you've developed a nasty habit of waking up 10 to 20 minutes before your alarm rings, and unfortunately, today is no exception. You lay in bed, each minute ticking closer and closer to wake-up time, and passing on a swelling wave of ever-encroaching dread. Sooner than you would like, your alarm blares with caustic inevitability. You frantically pound the snooze button and then retreat under your blankets, as if the warmth of your comforter can shield you from the passage of time. You almost always have difficulty rising from bed, but today the simple task seems nothing short of Herculean. After after several snooze cycles, you decide that you just can't deal with work today. You're incapable of even rousing yourself from bed, let alone going into work and having to force yourself through a workday. Not to mention you've snoozed so many times it would be impossible to make it in on time now. Anyways, what do you do? Hop out of bed and start getting ready for work. You'll be late, but it's better than not going in at all. Head into work. At least you can leave early if it gets too unbearable. Call your boss and tell him you're sick and won't be in today.、Uh, still moderately depressed and in therapy. I would. I.、Hmm, it's difficult to rising from bed. I guess I could really count this as school and kind of see it that way. I would. I would really just call my boss and tell him I'm sick and won't be in today. That's what I would do. In spite of the fact that you know that it's your job and that you should go, you keep fighting yourself every step of the way. Every time you resolve to climb out of bed and just go, your body seems to get heavier and your head gets foggier, and you find yourself unable to actually make yourself move. You grab your phone and dial your boss's number, hoping that it's early enough yet that he won't be there and you can just leave a message. Fortunately, after a couple of rings, the voicemail picks up and you leave a message explaining that you're sick and won't be in today. As you hang up the phone, you worry that perhaps your message sounds like a lame excuse. You hope your boss won't call or email you to follow up with your message, but for now, you're too foggy to do too much of any sort of thinking. And eventually, you fall back into a sleep that is both heavy and restless, with your chin curled up at your feet, 
occasionally repositioning as you toss and turn. When you wake up the next morning, short of feeling well rested, you actually feel more stressed out. While it was definitely nice to get a break from work, you're now faced with a new problem you hadn't considered before. You still have to go to work today. While you aren't having the same problems physically getting out of bed you were having yesterday, the prospect of having to face your boss after missing a day of work does not seem appealing in the slightest. You worry that your absence won't be seen as believable or legitimate, that your coworkers and boss will think you were just trying to half acidly play hooky, or worse, you fear that someone will actually ask you what's wrong. Being caught in that instance and having to either make up a half-baked excuse or worse, that they'll see right through you and know. Quickly as your mood matching the drizzly weather outside, you know that you have to go into work, but your fear of being perceived as either lazy or defective is making you regret today's decision to take the day off, and ultimately you feel worse for it. That is, that is an issue um, with depression, is, is that you don't want to face the higher the your boss or, or teachers or professors or any anybody in with a higher status uh, because it's just you just you feel weak you feel weak to them the fact that they, that they won't believe you and stuff and it just it's very hard to really overcome that sometimes uh, I, I know it was hard for me before but uh, with work um, it's actually one of the things you could talk to human resources now um, that a lot of companies see depression as as an illness like a medical issue that that isn't an excuse um, as people as people have seen uh, sought to it uh, before in the past and if you really aren't feeling well um, because of this then it you should talk to them about that and just you know sometimes having that issue it's just wrong you know it's overwhelming for you uh, but more or less of the time I, I believe that they would need a doctor's note or something to to really see it because if everyone just says that then it, it just becomes an excuse pretty much if everyone just kind of says it you know I'm still moderately depressed it's 2 a.m. on a Sunday and you have work in the morning you roll over to see the sickly green glow of the time displayed on your LED alarm clock and let out an exasperated sigh you've been trying to fall asleep for over three hours now to no avail every time your head hits the pillow you're overcome with anxious thoughts that wrap themselves around each other. Worries about your job lead to worries about your future lead to worries about you, your very identity, and you're unable to shake them off long enough to doze off. Your eyes won't even stay shut as your mind races through imagined scenarios going horribly wrong, which you'll probably attribute to your general worthlessness. That's a big issue. When you have all these racing thoughts, you're unable to sleep. And for me, when I was unable to sleep, um, I had to actually take some uh, medication to help me sleep, but it, it, it's just with all these racing thoughts and anxiety within yourself, you just can't sleep. And then when you wake up, you just feel horrible because, because you try to sleep and then you eventually fall asleep, but then it's later in the night and then you wake up like for only with five hours of sleep or, or less and it's and you just feel groggy the whole day and just very down and horrible. It's a bad feeling to have. Your thoughts run too fast for you to come to a satisfying conclusion in any one of them. Your room is completely silent but the silence has given you has given way to a loud static noise rattling around inside your head. Your heart beats loudly and you worry it's beating a little too fast. You worry that if you focus too strongly on your racing heart, you'll freak yourself out hard enough that you'll that you have a heart attack. You have to be awake for work in a mere 8 hours. You know that your work is so much worse on only a few hours sleep. What do you do? Wow, that is a lot of things I can't do. Worse is up to sleep, go to bed, it shouldn't be that hard. Just close your eyes and let it happen. Why won't your thoughts back off for 5 seconds? 
Snap out of it, what is wrong with you? Why can't you stop stressing out for 5 seconds? You're probably going to go into work tomorrow exhausted and fuck everything up and get fired. Um, and the last, and the only option is go to your computer. Sleep is clearly not happening no matter how long you lay there. Uh, go into the computer to because sleep is not happening is a pretty bad idea because unless you have the the uh, the blue light dimmer, which a lot of um, which you can just download for free, which really helps with the lighting in the computer because there's a lot of blue light which is unnatural, so it keeps you awake when you're looking at the screen. But if you have this software on, I think I have it, it's called uh, Flow. And it really dims it to how the sunrise and sunset goes and how much blue light is shown. So then it kind of helps you get to sleep um, when you're on the computer because you just feel tired, like naturally tired. And with that, um, uh, I'm out of time, but everyone, thank you for watching. If you um, like this video, please um, like, it, uh, like it and subscribe to me. That would help me a lot, and I appreciate it so much. But more importantly, please share this video with people to show awareness of depression and how, how it affects people and just, and just how it actually did affect me before. Because people just play this game without having the sen ha without having depression, you, you can't really understand it as much as someone who has gone through depression and understand what people are going through. So yeah, everyone, thank you again for watching and just thank you again. I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.